We need these guys here all the time. It just calms everything down, quiets everybody. Good to see you all this morning. Welcome to our worship time together. Uh, a special day today. Uh, this is our observance of All Saints Sunday. And uh, it has been the custom of our church to remember those saints of our congregation who have passed in the, in the last year and, and have a candle lit for each of them in the service. And we'll do that a little bit later. But as you see, we've, we've had a few folks from our congregation who have passed this past year. And so many of you are here uh, as part of family or friends, and we're glad you could be. And uh, we, we are glad to be able to remember your loved one and our fellow saint here at St. At John's. Also, as you see, we do have some other guests. We are glad to have the Brevira Brass with us again. Uh, it's been a little while. They've been, they were kind of an annual fixture for a bit, and then COVID kind of changed all that. So we're glad to have them back. I think the last time they were here was also All Saints Sunday. We felt like it just worked together to um, remember these folks and have something special, some music to uh, uplift us and to, re and to just put us in a worshipful mood. So we are delighted to have you back with us. Welcome. I'm just going to continue with the announcements because there's just a lot. There's a lot going on here. So in the narthex, a few things because we are now approaching, fast approaching Advent. First Sunday, November, here we go. So, a few things that are out there. Number one, there is the poinsettia order sheet. Yes, we need to start ordering poinsettias now. So if you would like to order a poinsettia for Christmas Eve, please pick up a sheet and return it when you have it filled out and the money and all that stuff. So that's out there. We also have a large uh, green sheet out there that has our announcements for the week, but on the back of that sheet is listed the number of items for the Bethany Children's Home Christmas gift gathering that we do here as well every year. Uh, those will be due in the middle of Advent, but you might want that list to start doing a little shopping now. We have been well appreciated, and you have done a great job as a church over the years at providing things for the children at Bethany. So uh, take one of those papers or be on the lookout for those of you who get our, our email. Uh, we'll, okay, I will occasionally put that list on there as well. I believe it's also listed on that green sheet, the items for gift cards for Effort of Manor. We've also been involved in that for years for Christmas, getting gift cards or gifts. They've kind of Encourage gift cards, it seems to work a little bit easier for the residents there. So there's again a list of places that they would appreciate cards from for the holidays. And also out there on a the table, you will see a box of these. So this is our Christmas ornament idea for this year, for Advent. So we encourage you to take one of these with you. And what it is, is a globe, it pulls apart, and we'd ask you to do two things to your globe for your ornament this year. Place a little something in there that just is something about you or something that you think you'd like to have on your ornament. So obviously it can't be something big. You can even write a little note or something, I don't care. And then on the outside, if you'd like to, and I believe you can just use permanent marker for this, but if you want to put your name or any other decoration on the outside or stickers like we did last year with those ornaments, feel free. So pick one up. This will be for the first Sunday of Advent, which is November the 27th, okay? Speaking of other dates this month, I also want to make you aware of November the 20th, all right? During the service on November the 20th, we're making it a Thanksgiving service because Thanksgiving is that week. And we will be giving thanks throughout the service from a variety of folks in our congregation who are in leadership of the various things going on in our church, where we just wanna spend time lifting up thanks for what God has done for us in the past year, particularly the last two years through COVID, as well as take a moment in that service to kind of push us on ahead to what's coming up in 2023 and and where we're going as a church and the needs we might have as a church so it's going to be a special service with a bunch of people involved from our congregation and i just hope you could all kind of be here to be a part of that um 
couple updates. You did a wonderful job. I did not get the final update on the care center pumpkin contest, but you guys last week did great. You just filled up those little cups with bills, dollar bills and things, and uh, Charlotte was uh, thrilled. So we'll try to figure out which one of those won. I don't know the answer to that yet, but it doesn't matter. They're all winners, and you helped out with a nice little fundraiser that the kids enjoy watching those little cups fill up with some money. Last week as well, we finished our Harvest Home Drive, and that all went to real life. Rod uh, Redke, the director, informed me that we were able to contribute over 250 pounds of food items, hygiene products, and paper products. So well done. He was, again, very appreciative and thankful for all that you, all that you gave. And relative to the community, we are going to bring back the community Thanksgiving Eve service, which is Wednesday, uh, Wednesday, November 23rd, Thanksgiving Eve. It is going to be at the United Methodist Church on Main Street. I get to preach. They're going to host. The Lutheran Church pastor is going to put the service together. So I was a short straw for the preaching, and that is what happened. Now, last things relative to pastoral concerns. A wonderful celebration here. We have a rosebud on the altar that announced, and I was able to announce this, I think, last week, but now we got the rosebud. The birth of Rose, Salome McQuaid. Uh, she was born Friday, October the 28th. Rose is the daughter of Nathan McQuaid and uh, Alicia Wengert and the grandchild of Corey and Dee McQuaid. So congratulations to all around. So we are praying our blessings upon that new family and uh, all that's ahead for them. The other, other flowers here are placed by Dave and Esther Erb in honor of all the November birthdays. And so we might as well at least state that today of all days of November is the birthday of both Dina Good, D Dina, Dina Good, Dina Hornberger. Where is Dina? Hi, Dina. I went like 40 years back, I went just a second ago. But who? And Esther Herb. It's her birthday today, too. So happy birthday to the two of you. One of you is younger than the other, but I won't say which, right? <laughs> Last thing I'm going to say, relative to the service, we are going to bring back, to a degree, our offering in the service. You have all been wonderful at putting your offering in the collection plate on your way in or on your way out. But we would like to dedicate that a little bit more specifically than I've been doing over time. So after our passing of the peace, most Sundays in the future, you're going to start hearing the notes of We Give Thee But Thy Own, which I think you're all familiar with. And we're going to sing that as the offering is brought forward and prayed for specifically. So just note that will happen today, and it hasn't happened for a while. So just keeping you in the loop for the service itself. So we've come to worship together today. I invite us to bring everything that we've been talking about, which is all part of being church together, along with each other, who are the church here this morning, and let's bring ourselves before God. Let's pray. Here we are, O oh Lord, in this house that we have the hands of our family, friends, saints have built a house that we come into but has been blessed as holy and sacred for this very purpose, to worship you, to be a place and a people throughout the week, but especially in this time, on this day of the week, that shows everyone around that there is a God who's worthy of worship. And so we bring ourselves together to you and give you that worship this morning. Hear us as we bring worship in song, in music, in prayer, in our time together. As we come, your saints and the heavenly host. Amen. So I invite you to rise as we come and worship our God together. Our songs are on the screen for those of you who are new to us here today, and you can follow along that way, or you can pick up your hymnal and join us for hymn number 529 for all the saints.
Indeed, we as the saints of God have gathered here this morning, and with God comes his presence, his assurance of love, mercy, and forgiveness, and his peace. So I invite you to take a moment and just share the peace of Christ with those around. The peace of Christ be with you all. Pass that to one another. Again, gracious God, we gather, we are thankful and grateful for all that you have given, for life and love, mercy and grace. May your light shine upon us that we might take what you have now blessed as we've given it to you and use it to let your light shine wherever we can. Receive what we give. Bless it to your work in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. I invite us into our time of remembering our saints with these words of scripture from Ephesians chapter three, excuse me, chapter one, verses three through 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love, he destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he has set forth in Christ. As a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope in Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit, this is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. I invite you to come forward, Sydney, <clears throat> and invite us to come into a time of prayer. Lord, as we gather together for worship, we offer to you not only our thanks and praise, but also the brokenness and sadness of our hearts. You fill our emptiness with your grace and peace, and it is because of your love that we can have hope in the midst of difficult circumstances and loss. For those who are burdened with anxiety and fear who gather here today, may they know your reassuring presence. For those who have experienced the pain and sorrow of losing someone close, may they know your comfort and healing. We thank you, God, for the memories of loved ones who are now in your eternal care. 
And we echo this familiar refrain. What happiness we share when they walked among us. What joy when loving and being loved we lived our days together. Time has passed, and still we fear, feel near to them. Their souls are bound up in ours forever. So in gratitude for all the blessings we shared together, we dedicate ourselves anew to the faith and work they inspired in us. And as we walk in the valley of the sorrow, may our good shepherd be you, O God, and may you sustain us all in our journey. And so now, God, be with us, especially as with fondness and thanksgiving, we remember your saints. Alan Meckley. Ralph McLean. Shirley Lefevre. Nancy Young. Nolan Lead. Peggy Gaiman.
Nadine Lead. Scott Swiger. And now we light one more candle for those who are saints in your life, who have passed in this last year, who you're thinking of right now, we light their candle as well. We give you praise, O oh God, for the lives that were given to us, lives that remain with us still. We give you thanks for the struggle of grief, for it is through grief that oftentimes we are led to new life, for the pain of loss that leads to the beauty of times remembered, for the hope of eternal life that promises our reunion with our loved one and with the saints in glory. We join them and the heavenly host in praising you, O oh God. We ask, Lord, that the ongoing griefs and burdens, cares of life that weigh us down are taken by you and we are reminded again and again of who we are in Jesus Christ that we are reminded in the midst of the challenges there is resurrection and new life, and that we are the bearers of that news as your people, as your saints living here now. So indeed, may our tears be wiped away, and may we be strengthened in confidence and certainty of a, an eternal hope, of eternal life that begins even this day as we seek to be your people and your church. We place all into your hands as we've come together. In the blessed name of Christ our Lord, and we pray that prayer which he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Sydney. At this time, I'm going to invite the children, if they'd like to come up and be with me. Like to come on up? Matt, I'm going to need that. All right, you guys can have a seat right here on this first step right there. Hello there, Paxton, how are you? Come, good to see you guys. Thanks for joining us today. Wow, thanks for being here with us for our church service, a special time. We just remembered people who aren't with us anymore, but were very special to you, some of them. Yeah, very special to all of us. But you know, sometimes when people aren't with us anymore, you know they're sort of still with us, aren't they? We remember them, and we have 
people from the whole family who are still around, and we remember each other, even though we don't always see each other. Isn't that right? Do we always see God? We don't always see God, do we? But you know what? He's with us. Just like the people who aren't always here are with us in our hearts and in our memories and in the people around us, God is with us in the church people. God is with us when we look around and see the birds flying around and we see the grass growing or the leaves falling. We remember God made all that, right? So God is with us even when we don't see him. And when God is with us, we don't need to fear. We don't need to worry because we know he knows what we need. And he's going to take care of us, okay? The children here have been learning about that lately, about how God provides for his people. And we're going to help you keep learning about that a little bit, okay? But most importantly, never forget, even when you don't see him, God lives in our hearts, in Jesus, all right? Let me pray. We thank you, God, today that we are reminded that even though people have passed and are no longer with us, we know they're still with us in our hearts. And that reminds us that even though we don't always see you all the time, God, you are with us in our heart. You are caring for us, loving us, and guiding us, even when we especially feel most alone. So I pray for these boys and girls that they might know you are always with them every day. Thank you for your love for us. Amen. Would you guys like to go learn a little bit more with Children's Church? You're going to go with Miss Becky there. Just follow her, and she will have some more to learn about God with you. Again, to just put more worship into our time in this very meaningful and moving service, we've invited the Brevira Brass to be with us and share kind of as our message today in music. For we know through music, oftentimes God speaks to us as he did in the Old Testament with, with David and calmed the people. He calms us, lifts us, and keeps us going in all sorts of ways. One of those ways is music. So we allow the Revere Brass to speak to us today on God's behalf, if you will, and ask his blessing upon them that our ears may be open and our hearts open to meeting God in this time together.
take a moment to introduce the next piece. Um, it's about a piece with eager footsteps. It's a piece from uh, Bach's uh, Tata number 78, around 1740. And uh, if you know anything about the uh, work of Bach, most of his cantatas were written for use in the church, so uh, most of them also have a text. And uh, the text for this one is, Thy sacrifice has cleansed the sting, making my heart all pure again, happy and free, happy and free. But if we think of the saints who have gone before us and who've uh, run the race and have received the, uh, the blessing and the glory of heaven, well done, good and faithful servant, we will hasten with eager footsteps on our own race. And we're thankful for their testimony and um, the faithful hand of God for God us his own life. Thank mm -hmm.
Thank you so much. That was, I think, a very rich blessing to what we had here in our worship service together today. And appreciate you coming and providing that for us so very much. I want to draw us to a close and follow that up with a word of thanks and scripture affirmation here from Ephesians. The rest of the chapter that I began uh, earlier with, I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of our heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope in which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the work of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand and the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. We are the church alive, the saints today, filled with the riches of God, that we might go and glorify our Lord and our God. Let's conclude singing our own hymn together. I'm going to ask you to rise, and we're going to sing Rise Up, O Saints of God. Saints of God, go forth in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who loves you, who saved you, who gives you life this day and every day. Reflect his glory and sing his praises. Amen. You may be seated.